Hey, everybody, welcome to uh, the Pickmonic webinar. Uh, my name is Kevin, also known as the Boot Nurse, and welcome to the webinar that Pickmonic has allowed for me to be on. We love your questions. Leave your questions down in the chat widget, which will be in the bottom right hand corner uh, in the chat box, and we'll answer those questions um, at the end. When you registered for the webinar, you were entered in for a chance to win one year free of a Picmonic subscription. So stay tuned to the end as we announce the winner by name, uh, and I'll let you guys know when that happens. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and will be posted on YouTube and on Picmonic's blog afterwards. It usually takes about a day. And finally, be sure to stay tuned for the entire webinar because I have a promotion that I want to give you guys at the end. So we'll wait for a second and we'll give people a chance to kind of catch up and make sure they jump onto the webinar. All right, time's up. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, my name is Kevin, also known as the Boot Nurse and welcome to the Picmonic webinar. So a little bit about me, some people have seen me on social media and some people haven't. I'm not saying I'm a big deal or anything, but <laughs> uh, just a little bit about myself. I am a active duty Navy hospital corpsman, first class or an E6 for those who don't understand the Navy ranks. I'm also a surgical technologist in the Navy as well as an instructor. I have been in the Navy for 13 years and six months, but who's counting, right? I originally started my nursing journey in 2012 Funny story, I told one of my mentors that I wanted to be a nurse. He told me that I needed to go on deployment so I can be competitive. I said, sure. Three weeks later, I ended up in Afghanistan for an entire year. Probably one of the most rewarding and best experiences that I had for myself in order for me to really understand medicine uh, at a higher level and at a faster pace. When I came back, I started my nursing journey knocking on my prereqs at local community schools. Uh, that's when I was living in, in Florida at the time. Then I moved to Texas and I was able to start and finish up my prerequisites there. Started nursing school. Wow, when did I start nursing school? It feels like so long ago. Tw uh, 2017, January of two, uh, 2017, I am a Texas A&M Corpus Christi alumni. Uh, most people know that I'm a Longhorns fan, but in the end, nobody cares where you went to school as long as you have a license, right? So went to Texas A&M and Texas A&M and Corpus Christi has three different, um, three different programs, so to speak. Even though it's all under one program, you have the traditional uh, classes, which you go face-to-face. Uh, -face. Then you have the E-line, which is where you go to school, nursing school completely online. And then they have what is called the E-line military program. And that is a program that I went through. And that program is solely for Navy hospital corpsmen, uh, Army medics, and Air Force medics, and uh, veterans that were in any of those uh, fields of work uh, in the military. Uh, and that was the one that I did. So when I got into nursing school, started nursing school, uh, it was a lot harder than I actually thought. <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, I formed a group with, you know, a few young ladies that I was in school with, um, and it definitely was a team effort for us to get all the way through it. Uh, clinicals. Of course, this is uh, pre-COVID, so clinicals for me were done at the local hospital, and I would do them on Saturday and Sundays, 12-hour shifts. So I kind of want to just paint a picture. So while I started nursing school, I was actually a surgical tech instructor, and as a surgical tech instructor and in the military, I still have military obligations that I have to do, such as PT, uh, what we call in the Navy, sailorization, um, you know, my teaching aspects and any, any administrative work that I had to do after that. So some days my days would start at 530 and I would work all the way at 530 in the morning to about five in the evening, uh, go to the gym because, you know, you got to get that, you got to get those pumps on and then, you know, study from seven o'clock at night till one o'clock in the morning. And that was my life for the first semester. Uh, and then I got blessed with being a clinical instructor to where I was at the clinical site. So I would make sure my students were good to go taking care of their obligations to the Navy. And then after they got finished, I was able to go sit in the cafeteria while on site and do any homework and stuff that I needed to do at that point. It was a humbling experience to go through nursing school and it was definitely hard. So I'm one of those special people that worked full-time and went to nursing school full-time the entire 18 months. So my, my school was 18 months. It was a BSN program. 
uh, because I had knocked out all my prerequisites prior to that. So like I said, it's definitely rewarding. It was definitely hard. Um, and it was definitely a team effort for everybody to get through nursing school. I currently, right now, am working in a burn center as a registered nurse. And that is probably one of the most um, humbling experiences that you could have as a nurse is for people that have massive amounts of burns from, you know, 5% to 80% of their body burned. And uh, it's definitely a blessing for me to be able to learn from all the wonderful nurses that I work with uh, and able to provide care to those individuals. So uh, if anybody has the chance to do an internship or you know do a residency for critical care or whatever you wanna do, just make sure that you guys jump on that, right? Now, shocker, main reason why everybody is here. I failed my NCLEX three times. <clears throat> all right, come on. Let, 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 let's talk about that, right? So the first time I took my NCLEX, I was one of those individuals. <clears throat> I have past medical experience as a corpsman, but as a corpsman, you're really kind of taught the, the how uh, rather than the why and the, main, the maintenance of what it's like to be a nurse when you're taking care of a patient. So I had this whole thought process in my head that thinking that I knew it. My school provided uh, HESI, not a fan. Um, I talked about that as well uh, on my YouTube channel, which you guys can follow here. And I talked a lot about that and how I didn't really like it. A lot of people, other people have Kaplan, other people have ATI, people talk all about it. Um, but you know, whatever you use is whatever you used. <clears throat> so took my first exam, I got 75 questions. And now I know at this point, if I have 75 questions, I either did really good or really bad. In my mind, I'm just like, oh, aced it. And I took it two days before my birthday. So then, you know, take the test, go party, do whatever, come back. And I'm just like, boom, fail. And I'm just like, wow. All right, well, I need to get back to studying. So then a friend talked me into UWorld. And so I was using UWorld and Kaplan, I'm sorry, UWorld and Mark Klimek the second time. And the crazy thing about Mark Klimek is that everybody knows about that audio. Everybody knows about his audios floating around the internet but I had no idea that he actually offered a real course. And the funny thing about it is like, when you offered the real course, I went to it, right? The famous blue and yellow book, right? Uh, crazy thing about his audio is that it's, oh man, it's probably about 12, 14 years old at this point. Not saying that it's irrelevant, but if you guys support him, make sure you guys go to his stuff and get the most up-to-date stuff. He doesn't allow recording now for obvious reasons. And if you're one of those people that are selling his stuff, don't be a dirtbag and sell his stuff, okay? So I used him and I used UWorld. Took the test again and I got to 265 questions. And at this point, uh, like I got to 265, I'm sorry, I got to 200 questions and it was just like, oh my God, what is happening? And my vision just started to just kind of close in and everything started to get fuzzy. And long story short with that, I got to question 265 with 22 seconds left. And I don't even remember the last 40 questions. I was just clicking all the way through. Uh, not something I would advise because for those that don't know, the NCLEX is a computer adaptive test. So if you're answering well, it'll give you harder questions. If you're answering not so well, it'll give you easier questions. So if you start missing easy questions, they're gonna, that, that's, that's, that's probably one of those things that should go off in your brain. Like, wow, I should pro I'm probably not answering these questions right. I need to slow down and think about what I'm, uh, what I'm answering. So I failed again. And then I said to myself, I know what I did wrong, thinking that I know what I did wrong. And when I went to take it a third time and I still used UWorld and I still use Mark Clement. And then I failed at 106 questions. And at this point, I sat back and I was just like, man, I'm a failure. And when I said that out loud, somebody heard me and they were like, no, you're not a failure because this test doesn't define you. And it's right, the test doesn't define everything and, and all the work that I put in up to that point. And then the work that I didn't put up to that point. So what I'm gonna say to everyone is don't quit, find your way. Uh, and you'll make it. And if you don't know, legitimately find a mentor to somebody who is already there and ask them how you get there. So then it comes to my fourth time taking the NCLEX. And so this is where we will segue into how I was able 
to pass NCLEX with my seven tips. So the first thing that I realized is once I realized that I needed to change up my study habit, I needed to figure out why, like, like how, what am I, what is the material that I'm studying? What am I not doing at home? What am I not doing at work? Am I working too much? Do I need to take more time off work? Whatever, right? So the first thing that you need to do is that you need to manage your time. I don't know if everybody knows this, but we all have the same 24 hours in one day. How you spend that 24 hours is completely up to you, or it may not be completely up to you because you may have kids, you know, spouse may be working and you're the only person at home. You may be a single parent. Uh, some people have uh, learning disabilities that, you know, some people work, you know, two or three jobs. There are a plethora of things that can uh, handle your time management. But here's one thing. How uncomfortable are you willing to be for you to be successful later on? Are you willing to be uncomfortable for two or three months while you're studying for NCLEX so you could, you know, have a life, get back to your normal life? Or do you want to just can keep consistently studying and making excuses for yourself? So time management time management. Now, one thing that I will say is about Picmonic, and they do have this weekly NCLEX uh, workbook, which I think is absolutely fantastic, which is crazy because I didn't get this until after I passed. But the funny thing about this book is, <clears throat> excuse me, the funny thing about this book is that it has all the content laid out for you every day by the hour on what you need to study. And it's super driven for content and the content is amazing. So probably one of the, the, the best things about, about it is that you can, you know, you can check it off. It has word searches. It has different, all different types of pictures. But the best thing about it is that it holds you accountable. Like Picmonic already did all the work for you. And, then, and here's the thing. This is based off of four weeks. But you can make your own calendar. If you want to take, if you want to take eight weeks to study because you know that you can't sit in front of a computer or for a book for so long, then go ahead and, 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 and put, oh, I'm going to study, I'm going to study antibiotics and how they affect the body. Like, I don't know, vancomycin. What are the big things about vancomycin? Um, or like my favorite Picmonic in here, which is pencil villain. And funny thing about pencil villain, let's talk about him real quick. I don't know if anybody watches Rick and Morty, but I'm a big Rick and Morty fan. And the whole time I was calling him Pencil Vester because he looks exactly like Pencil Vester. So I don't know, <laughs> I have no idea what the artists were doing, but I know for a fact that they got that idea from Rick and Morty. So shout out to the artists for doing that. I thought that was actually kind of funny. And it's actually one of those things that really stuck in my head. So, but time management, that's the biggest thing that will, that will help you uh, on your way of creating a pattern for yourself. And with that time management, you have to incorporate content. And the content is in this book or whatever content that you want to study. So for me, I know that pediatrics and pharmacology were the worst for me. Little people scare me. Yes, I said little people. And pharmacology is just, it's just a monster on so many levels. And it's even worse when I'm working in a burn unit and it's just a monster of just how they affect the body. And we're learning it right here for the NCLEX on a basic level. So when you guys get out there to your units or wherever you guys go as nurses, it, is, it, it can be very, very uh, taxing intelligent wise, but we all can do it, you can do it. So you also wanna incorporate quizzes in there. So content quizzes. I studied anywhere from 75 to 150 questions uh, every day. And then the closer that I got to NCLEX, it went from every day to every other day. So then I would do content at one point, and then I would, yeah, I would do content at one point, and then I would do my questions and answers. Now, as you're answering your questions and your answers, the biggest thing that you want to do is that you want to go back and you want to read and remediate. Even if you got the question right, you want to read and remediate. Because one thing I will tell you, content is king. You will hear that everywhere. Even if you're, if you're creating YouTube videos, if you're creating, I don't know, a podcast, content is king. If you don't understand the content that you're learning, you will not be able to apply it to NCLEX style questions. NCLEX style questions are critical. So you want to be able to understand your content in order to apply it to your questions. All right. Um, a couple of other tools that I used 
I used Kaplan. I loved, I loved Kaplan when I used them. Um, there were a plethora of other things that I used, such as Mark Clemick's audio. I don't, like I said, if no one's ever listened to Mark Clemick's audio, if you can find it and, you know, acquire it, then it is a wonderful tool. But of course I say, go support him. Uh, his audio is fantastic. I would listen to it everywhere. If I was driving to work, if I was driving home from work, mowing the lawn, in the shower. Yeah, I said it in the shower with a speaker because we got to be safe around here. So Mark Clement was great. And then of course, Picklonics YouTube. <clears throat> Fantastic, right? Other tools that I use was Register Nurse RN. Like, and let's talk about Nurse Sarah, right? Let's just be real. We all know that if we could give her our tuition money, we would. So shout out to Nurse Sarah, Register Nurse RN. She's doing great things over there. Remar Nursing, of course, Regina doing her thing. Uh, Khan Academy, which was fantastic for me when I used it at the beginning. And uh, UWorld for NCLEX style questions. And there's also another one out there called Archer, which is kind of like UWorld, but a little cheaper. I didn't say that. So those are, those are a few things that, you know, those are the things that you can use uh, when it comes to you, you know, you know like I kind of like diversifying your portfolio, finding different things that help you do um, uh, that help you do and understand everything from different angles, because we all know that some books say one thing, some books say another, but in the end, they're going to all use relatively the same type of uh, material to uh, create questions, right? Another thing, part of my tips is that when you go to take your NCLEX, do not expect for you guys, do not expect to take the NCLEX with 75 questions. Do not go in there expecting to take the minimum amount of questions. Go in there and expect to go all the way. Go the distance. Go the distance like Rocky. I talked about that in the video. It was funny at some point for some people who have seen Rocky and some people who haven't. It's a great movie. Um, but when I was in school, all the professors talked about was 75 questions, 75 questions. You want 75 questions. I was like, but if I get 75 questions, when I hit question 76, then the first thing that I'm going to do is like my heart's going to fall through my back. Like, really? So go in there expecting to, to do all 145 questions. When I did it, it was 265. When the first three times I did it. And then of course, when I had my COVID edition questions, I don't know if I can say that. Hopefully this doesn't get demonetized. But those questions, I had 60. And it was a max of 130 at that point. But still, this is still the same concept for you guys. Um, so when you go in there, study like you're gonna study like you're gonna be there for the whole five hours. And then if you're only there for an hour, then then, then you're good to go. You're good to go at that point, right? But you you it's kind of like we're for for athletes. It's like you practice your hardest in practice for you to get a spot so you can show out at the game. And then when you so going to NCLEX is like showing out at the game. You know all your plays. You know everything that you're going in there for. You feel confident. You go in there, boom, you're done. And you can leave with your head held high, right? Um, another thing that I like to say is do not study the day before your NCLEX. So today is Thursday. Let's just say your NCLEX was tomorrow. Today would be a day that you don't study for your NCLEX. Um, I had an instructor. His name was Cedric Brown. Uh, he was my instructor when I went to core school way back when. And when we were studying to, you know, to be corpsmen and he saw a bunch of us cramming in the books and he was just like, just put the books away. He was just like, because you've had plenty of time to study for this exam. So if you're trying to cram the day before your exam, then that's a problem because if you don't know it by now, then you don't know it at all. I mean, I seem like, I, and that's a, and that's a philosophy that I've always lived by ever since he, uh, ever since he said that. So if you make yourself a proper study guide and a proper plan for yourself, then you shouldn't have to study the day before. The day before should be a day of trying to relax because I know it's overwhelming. I know it's you're super nervous and you could be a wreck. Um, don't try to go out there and party a day before because I know a girl who's, who did that and she went out there and was just like, oh, no, I'm turning up. And I was like, well, shouldn't you turn up after you take your exam? Like after and turn up even better, like after you pass? But hey, common sense isn't always common sometimes. So uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely um, don't cram the day before the exam. Try to relax. Try to watch a movie. Uh, I don't know what movie's out. WandaVision's great. This is not sponsored by that. I'm just saying it's good. It's a good show. So um, another thing, get 
plenty of sleep and prepare the next or uh, prepare uh, the day before. So what I did is I put out my outfit. I had my ID there. I had my keys there. I had my shoes lined up. I even put my toothbrush. I had, I had toothbrush and toothpaste and all that stuff lined up on the counter. So I already knew I was already going to have a bad, a bad time sleeping. So I went to bed early, like at eight o'clock, took a melatonin. That's just me personally. I took one of those, fell asleep, woke up at nine and did everything I needed to do because my exam was at one. And the great thing about my exam being at one is because every single time I did a practice exam, every single time I did a practice exam, it was around one o'clock. So just make sure that you guys prepare the day before, try to get eight hours of sleep. Let's, you know, try to try to get qual, you know, some some type of quality sleep with that. Um, <clears throat> it's okay to not know everything. Like you are not meant to know everything. Mark says in one of his audios, even if you're acing it, they're gonna pull out stuff that you don't know. The biggest thing that you need to know is you need to know what everybody else knows. Like I understand that you want to know about all these crazy EKGs, but do you understand what normal sinus rhythm looks like? Or do you understand when it's not normal sinus rhythm that, hey, I should probably go check on my patient or something like that? Or do I know best versus first questions? Because first are based off of a list and best is, hey, if I could only do one thing and then leave the room, what would it be? For, so if a patient had an issue breathing, would the first thing I would do would be what? Is it give them oxygen or lift head of bed? Boom, I wanna lift the head of bed because it's based off of a list. If it was, if it was a best question, do I wanna lift the head of bed or do I wanna give them O2? I would rather wanna give them O2 if I knew I was gonna leave the bed because I'm giving them that supplemental oxygen so it can bring their O2 sats up. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of questions. Remember this test is computer adaptive. So there's a lot of questions up to like 6,000 or 10,000 or something super crazy like that. So it's okay if you're not going to know everything. Um, stay away from negativity. That's the last thing I would say. Stay away from negativity, uh, whether it be friends or spouses or any significant other or people, just neg just any type of negativity. There was one girl I know who she had three kids and a husband at home. Her husband was super supportive. She had to go get a hotel the last two days uh, and she did well. Like she called, check on the kids, but she had her own long time and it was quiet. And so she was, and she went to go take the test and she was pretty successful at that. So make sure that you try to keep negativity out uh, as much as possible. And that's pretty much it. Like, I definitely want to make sure that everybody gets, you know, enough information here to where, you know, I, want, I just want to make sure that everybody has a good understanding of what they're getting themselves into when they're going to take their exam. Because the biggest thing for me is that even though people were telling me about it, it's like that unknown of like, hey, what should I look at? How should I study? What material should it be? So on and so forth. <clears throat> so now the segue, now this segues us into our uh, Q&A. So first question is, what components of nursing uh, what components of nursing you would have liked to know before taking your first NCLEX exam? <clears throat> so the biggest thing about nursing that I wish I would have known were just the understandings of how to answer NCLEX style questions. Um, it wasn't like, because for example, like when you're going through school, the school only puts out like they make their own tests. But then like when you, like at least for us, they make their own tests. And then at the end, we took a HESI exam, which was NCLEX style. Um, and so I'm just like, how do we study NCLEX style? And people were just like, you just have to study. So I think the biggest thing for me is that I wish I could have gotten way more exposure to NCLEX style questions and, and help understanding NCLEX style questions way earlier. And I, and I think I would have been successful on taking my first exam. So that was a good question. Um, how can I download your book? I'll add you on YouTube. Uh, okay, I'll say, <laughs> how can I download your book? What book? I don't know what book you mean. But um, yeah, let's see what else. Let's see what other questions are, are popping up here. I know you guys are great. You guys are answering all these questions. Uh, will the NCLEX be timed? Yes, the NCLEX will be timed. 
funny thing that they don't tell you, or some people that don't tell you, is that on the top right hand corner when you're taking the NCLEX, it has a button to where you can hide the time and you can hide the questions. So for me, since I had huge test anxiety and a lot of people do, you can click those buttons and it'll hide the time and it'll hide the questions. So you can go at your own pace. <clears throat> so originally the test was six hours long uh, and you could take as many breaks as you wanted. But however, once you start your exam, the time keeps going. It doesn't stop even when you take a break. So if you take a 15 minute break, that's 15 minutes off of your exam. So just be mindful of that. Uh, but yes, it, the NCLEX is timed. And I believe right now it is five hours for 75 to 145 questions. That was a good question. Uh, do students need to memorize each of the cranial nerves and their functions for the NCLEX? So the cranial nerves are, when you're studying the cranial nerves, especially like if you're in your first semester of nursing school, is for you to get an understanding of what those cranial nerves do. So on the NCLEX, if you're getting asked, hey, what does cranial nerve 12 do? That is what they like to call a below the level question. Now, if you and now if I ask you a question about cranial nerves in the in, in the sense of a patient reports to the emergency department with X, Y, and Z, you need to know what cranial nerve 12 is and how it affects the body. That and then it'll and then it'll put them in the question form, but it won't say what cranial nerve 12 does. It'll just tell you that, hey, this is the issue that's happening and then you have to be able to answer it. Because remember, there'll be two answers that'll just be completely wrong. And then two answers, there'll be one answer that's right and then there'll be another answer that's more right, okay? So no, you don't need to memorize. It's all about being familiar. So you need to know that, but you don't have to memorize it. If you try to memorize everything, you're gonna go crazy. Um, next question, are COVID topics already included on the NCLEX? No, they are not. The last time I checked, they are not on, um, they are not on the NCLEX at all. However, if you guys go to the uh, ESB, uh, ESBN, wow, I'm watching way too much sports. If you guys go to the ncsbn.org website, uh, they will be able to tell you the most updated portions that are happening within uh, the NCLEX exam. So as of right now, COVID questions are not a part of the NCLEX. Uh, did you use the report that the Board of Nursing sends after not passing the exam? Yes, I did. Um, I wish I had it. I may be able to find it. I doubt it because I have so many papers in here. Oh, nope, that's not it. So I actually did get that. And my first one I got, it pretty much said, there's actually one of my video, oh, where I, my, well, my video where it says that I failed NCLEX, I actually put up all three of them and I showed what, where my standings were uh, in regards to when I took the exam. When the first time I took the exam, everything was below, below passing, um, except for a few that were above passing and one that was like near passing. The second time I took the exam, everything was near pass, one, a few were below, more were near, and then there was like one or two that were above. And then the third time I passed, everything was near passing. So that told me I was teetering the line of the passing line for uh, NCLEX. And then of course, the fourth time I took it, I don't, you don't get one. If you pass the exam, you won't get a breakdown if you fail because obviously you passed it. So, and I used those breakdowns to help me figure out where I was lacking at. And I know pediatrics was one and um, pediatrics was one and pharmacology was another. So there's, 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 there's eight portions of the NCLEX pie, so to speak, right? Pharmacology, patho, I'm sorry, pharmacology, uh, physiological adaptations, and uh, management of care. Those three make up 40 to 49% of the NCLEX. So if you can really do well there, then, and, and do well in other areas, you're gonna shatter that exam. Um, how early should you arrive at the testing center? So that's a good question. Um, I arrived, it, it says on the paper, once you register, it says that you should arrive about 15 minutes prior. That way you can park your car, use the bathroom, uh, check in because sometimes those lines are long and sometimes they're not because they don't only proctor nursing exams. There was somebody there that was taking their uh, social work exam. Somebody was doing architecture. Another girl was doing uh, education. So there are other people that are using this testing exam. And now with the testing centers and COVID precautions, the lines could be a little bit longer. So I would say give yourself about a good half an hour, 45 minutes 
to kind of get those pregame jitters out, check in, use the bathroom, go to your car, use the bathroom again, because you might. Um, but yeah, I would say give yourself about a good 30 to 45 minutes. And then before you know it, time is going to be flying. All right. Uh, how long should I take before taking the test a second time? I failed once and I feel like I have to study a lot and I'll never feel ready. So first time I took the exam was October of 2018. Second time I took it was July of 2019. I would not recommend doing it, waiting that long. Um, I got inside my head and I was feeling super nervous and I was feeling down. Um, I would say register for it as fast as you can. And the reason why I say that is because you'll, you, you, you keep retaining it. You keep retaining all that information. And if you set in, the biggest thing for myself is that if you set it in click state, once you set it, you, you know, you're locked onto it. So now, now the time is starting to tick down to where I need to hit these wickets that I need to hit. I need to do content. I need to do my questions. I need to do content, so on and so forth. All right. Hopefully that'll help you. Uh, what is the best strategy for select all that apply questions on the NCLEX? The good old Satan questions, as they call them. Um, for least for me, there were all of the things that you need to know were when selecting all of them, you'll know the ones that aren't right. So you can just go ahead and eliminate them. So a lot of times for just for me personally, I wasn't always the best at select all applied questions. Like I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna sit here and, and, and front with you. Um, the biggest thing for me, it was just, it was just doing them. It was understanding the question and then doing them and seeing which ones fit and which ones didn't. Um, the biggest mistake that people do is that they always select over by one. And now with the NCLEX is that either one can be it, multiple could be it, or all of them could be it. Now, when it comes to one of them and all of them being correct, it is very rare, but it is not impossible. So if you believe that it's right, then answer all of them. Um, there are a lot of, like a lot of the testing banks out there, they'll do that. Like when I was using Kaplan, uh, and when I was using UWorld, they, it was the same exact thing. I had probably like four or five questions that were select all apply in a row. And out of those five, there were probably two or three of them that all of them were correct. So honestly, it is just doing them, doing them, getting familiar with them and understanding, understanding the question as well as reading as thorough as possible the answers because one or two words can throw it off and make it right. Um, if you're not able to minimize distractions, i.e. negative people, what is the next best step to keep focused? <sighs> so for me personally, I like to call this a reevaluation period. Um, if you are being distracted by negative people um, who say that they are supportive of you, then that is a reevaluation period for you to take a step back and be like, does this person really support me? Um, because I see a lot of people that are say, oh, my friends tell me I don't hang out with them. And I was like, but your friends aren't going to nursing school. Your friends aren't taking this test. So you'll, you'll really, you will really know who really supports you and who your real friends are after you finish nursing school. I can tell you that for a fact. There were a lot of people that I was friends with and a lot of people that I was cool with. And then after nursing school and after I took my NCLEX, it was just like some people were there, a lot of them weren't, but that's okay because that's a sacrifice that you have to make for you in order for you to excel in life, all right? Um, how was your experience as a male nurse in nursing school and did that have any impact on your studies? Um, out of my cohort, I believe I had 130 people. Uh, out of 130 people, I wanna say there were like 11 or 14 guys and I was one of them. Um, so my experience in nursing school as a male, uh, honestly, like it, it, it wasn't that bad. And, and for those that don't know the numbers about nursing, 85 to 89% women, the rest is men. So it's a very female dominated occupation, which is fine. Um, but the, uh, I mean, the, I don't know, I, I don't feel like I was treated any different. Um, I kind of have a very... <laughs> not aggressive approach sometimes because I've been in the Navy for so long or an assertive one. So some of my instructors were kind of, I don't know, but it was okay. Uh, I didn't think my experience was that bad. Um, 
And for the impact on my studies, uh, I'm a very social butterfly. So I believe in working in small groups. And so I found a group of girls. I call them my girls from Houston, as well as my girls in San Antonio, to where they helped me out a ton. Um, and, you know, nursing and medicine is a team sport. So if I there was something I didn't understand, I always reach out to one of them and vice versa. So the studying was great. But remember, you don't have to do it all by yourself. You don't have to do it all by yourself. You can find you can find you a small group of people and you guys can work together. Teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, some people hate that, but I'm just keeping it real. Um, next question. Any advice for keeping it simple? I tend to overstudy and get caught up in uh, an interesting but otherwise unimportant for my exam details. I mean, it's just like it's just like you said. It's just like you got to keep it simple. Don't don't. Oh, I see. You're, you're probably one of those individuals who is just like, wait, but do they mean this or do they mean that? So there's a there's a saying that we say, at least I used to say to my students, and we call it RTFQ. Well, I call it RTFQ. RTFQ. If you know what it means, then good to go. I mean, if you write it in the chat, I, I can't stop you from doing that. But RTFQ, right? And only answer what they are asking. Don't think about, but what about this? It doesn't say in your question, hey, blah, 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 blah. Oh, hey, and also think about this. No, it's asking you about one specific thing. So focus on that. And the best way to do it is just practice. You have to practice, 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 and stay focused on just that question and what they're asking. Don't think about everything else because everything else is not going to get you the correct answer for that question. Um, you guys are throwing out some really good questions. Uh, what if in an NCLEX question, there is a disorder or medication I've never heard of, which tends to happen a lot. True story. Uh, what would you say is a good technique to use? So here's a good thing about pharmacology. Like I'll use, uh, I'll talk about cardiac, cardiac meds, right? So, and, I, and I'll go to, I'll use beta blockers because we all know that they're all associated by their last by their last portions of their name. So beta blockers, LOL, right? So we do we know that beta blockers decrease blood pressure as well as decrease heart rate, right? So if they threw out a medication, this is where you have to know your 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 families and your suffixes for your for your uh, for your medications. Once you understand where they fall in the in in their family line, then you'll be able to understand. It doesn't matter what I throw. I could throw out. Uh, Lobetalol, uh, propanolol, uh, any of those, right? But they all end in LOL. So I know that the that that the, in the grand scheme of things, that they will lower blood pressure and they can lower heart rates. So if you see a medication that you don't know, then go look it up, and then look up what family it's correlated with, and then understand wh where the family names fall into part or, or they fall into place, and then understand what is the what is the, the 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 broadness of what it's asking all right uh my school heavily focuses on using HESI throughout our entire nursing program <laughs> i know that feeling uh why would you say HESI isn't one of your favorite for example what makes HESI worse than other systems i can't say that HESI make uh i can't say that HESI is worse than any other systems i only go off of what people have told me so i had a friend who went to chamberlain and not Chamberlain, uh, she went to, I think it was Chamberlain. And I think they used ATI. I may be wrong, but she used ATI and she was not a fan of ATI, but ATI is the only thing that she used. And I think it was just because of the quality of questions. And so for me, when I was taking HESI, HESI was giving me NCLEX style questions, but I didn't feel prepared based off of the content that was given up to that point, as well as the amount of stuff that was given for me to understand NCLEX style questions, to tackle NCLEX style questions that were given through HESI. And so I just, it just, there were just a lot of just confusing questions for me when I was taking it. And I just, I just, me personally, I just wasn't a fan. Um, but then like, if it works for you, then it works for you. A lot of people, some people liked it. Majority of people that I went to school with that I were in my cohort at least did not like it. A few people, when I was doing clinicals, there were a bunch of people that used HESI and they didn't like it either. But I mean, it all just depends. Some, like I said, we had HESI, you have HESI, my friend had ATI, other people have Kaplan. And, you know, it's just all about, you know, how your personal experience was with it. It's just for me, I just wasn't, I was not a fan of HESI at all. 
how often should I do assessments before they take their NCLEX? Um, how often should you do, oh, an assessment, like, a, like, a, like testing yourselves? Um, I gave myself a quiz three to four times, or I did, my, I did an assessment uh, three to four times a week. And then the last assessment that I did for myself to test myself to, to see how well I would pass the NCLEX, I took my NCLEX on a Wednesday, and I think the last one I did was on a Sunday. Um, so if you can incorporate two to three assessments during the week and then dwindle it down, the closer that you get uh, to your NCLEX, then that's fine. Uh, for me, like I said, I, I would do a quiz or something else, you know, at the end of the week or sometimes in the middle of the week, just so I could, I would incorporate doing my questions, learning my content, and then doing a quiz or an assessment uh, throughout my week. So however you tailor it to yourself and for your own personal, for your own personal life, then I would, I would say, uh, try to do that. All right. Uh, these are going to be our last two questions. Uh, are we able to go back to the old questions and change the answers? No, you are not. Once you answer your question and you click forward, that's it. You can't go back. So I'm pretty sure every nursing student in here has, when they're taking their exams, it does that same thing. And the main reason why your school exams and your HESI, ATI, CAF, and whichever ones you're using do that is to prepare you for when you go and take your actual NCLEX. Because when you take your NCLEX, you can't go back. Um, so be confident in your answer and then move forward, all right? Uh, how well are you familiar with Kaplan Review and Remar Review? Which one do you think is more helpful? I heard people retaking exam using Remar Review a lot. Um, I, when I failed my third time, I, I, used, I used Remar uh, and, I'm sorry, I used Remar's Facebook page because she did a lot, she has a lot of motivational Mondays. I used her YouTube channel. Uh, and I also had a friend, uh, a very close friend who used Remar, and I like the structure of how she has it to where it'll throw out questions and it'll throw out content, but it forces you to kind of answer the questions. And if you get it wrong, you have to go back. So it kind of, it forces you to understand the question, but then some people will just be like, all right, I got that answer wrong. So I know it's going to take me back. And then they'll just fill it in until they get the answer right, but they're not learning anything. So that's like more... Some people are just doing it just to get through it. But remember, you're paying money for these things, either it be for Picmonic, either it be for Kaplan, for Mark Clinic or whatever. Um, so um, it all just depends. Like a lot of people like it. Some people don't. Um, Kaplan, I personally loved because it gave me everything that I needed under the sun from, you know, they did live webinars every every day for every different area. I actually did a review on them as well. If you guys go check out my YouTube channel. Um, also, uh, they give you NCLEX style questions. They give you assessments. They give you a readiness exam. They give you all kinds. They, they give you content. They give you uh, tons of just about all types of resource case studies. Um, Kaplan's been around for a long time, um, but a lot of people don't want to pay that Kaplan premium uh, it's the same premium as if, if you paid for Hearst, which is like anywhere from like two to three to four hundred dollars. Um, but you know, when there's a sale, there's a sale, and then there's a lot of things that you guys uh, you can get um, not prepaid, but you can um, make payments on. They have things and deals where you can do payments and stuff as well. So hopefully, I was able to answer your question. Me personally, I like Kaplan. Just to shorten that up, I like Kaplan a lot. So um, that's it on all the questions. I appreciate all the questions. You guys threw out a lot of good ones and I, and I appreciate that. Hopefully I was able to help. Um, and if I wasn't able to help, you guys can find me on, you know, at the boot nurse on Instagram. And I, and I love to ask, answer questions as much as I possibly can. Um, a recording for this uh, session that we have right now uh, will be available tomorrow on YouTube and on Picmonic's blog. And we'll email you a link to connect you uh, directly with the recording. Now it's time for us to do the giveaway. For that one year subscription to Picmonic and the worm, then the winner is Drumroll, please. Joel Razzo. Joel Razzo is the winner of the one year subscription to Picmonic. Uh, somebody from the team will be reaching out to you via email. So make sure you're looking out for that. Hey, but don't fret. Uh, even though we got that, uh, that one lucky winner, uh, I do have something else for you guys. Picmonic 
and myself, I'm sorry, PickMonix hooking me up so I can hook y'all up with a 30% off on PickMonix subscription that will last for 24 hours. There's two ways that you can get it. You can click the link right below uh, and you will receive an email which will send, be sent directly to, uh, to your email with the discount code within the next hour. So I appreciate everybody coming by and coming and showing some love. This was a really good experience for me. First live stream ever. Um, four things I want to leave you guys with is um, be flexible because you never know where you're going to be. Uh, don't overthink. Uh, observe everything and tackle everything that you feel like you can get. All right. I don't know if you guys got that acronym, right? Okay. B O O T. I'm just saying. But thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys later. Peace.